thank God that you're listening today. Thank God that you've opened up your ears. And thank God that you're ready to receive everything that God has for you. Uh, I, I started out to share with you the power that's in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, the, the, because I, this must be important, it, it, it is one of the, Jesus is what sets us apart from the, from the world. If we want to just be everyday average somebody, uh, then we're just out there in the soulish realm doing whatever. But Jesus, Jesus basically set us free. When you made Jesus the Lord of your life, you stepped into something that sometimes it takes actually years of meditating his word to even begin to understand what all he did for you. But basically what he did for you was set you free. One of the things he set you free from, if you walk in his, the power of that and in the word of God for knowledge, he set you free apart from circumstances. They're going to happen, but he's got a way through his word and through the name and through the empowerment that's in you that, that uh, you can rise above those circumstances. You could take control of some of those things. There are some things we can't control. We understand that. There's things going on out there. Uh, we're realistic about that, but there's things in our personal lives we can absolutely uh, take authority over and change. He's ab he has given you dominion over so many things. And you know, here we are sitting in a great nation. And to, to get into all this, you know, it's kind of like, I can't help but tell you, because of the time we are, you know, a few years ago, we became acquainted with something called the first landing in Virginia Beach. And a lot of people say, well, what is that? You know, when you hear people on TV talking, they talk about the pilgrims up in uh, Plymouth Rock and so on at, uh, about their entry. But in 1607, uh, about roughly 10, 11 years before that, there was a group from England that set shore uh, on the mouth of the... Uh, mouth of the Chesapeake Bay, they set across there at a place called Cape Henry, and, the, and the, 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 when they set that cross on that beach, they, they dedicated this land to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's historical, it's there, of course you have to read the real history, and not, not something that's been concocted by the PC people and all these things with this, all their new way of changing history that doesn't really, really be there. But at that point, there was a covenant made with this nation between our God and this nation, the United States of America. Now, it didn't exist then as a name, but it existed as a land. And you know what? If, if we went back far enough, uh, we would know that there was a plan that probably uh, it probably two to three thousand years ago they find a prophecy that maybe wouldn't mention America or the United States, but God had a plan. He had two plans to set people free. The first one was for his son to be brought uh, and to die for us and rise again and defeat the devil with his blood. That was one plan. The next plan was, how am I going to take the power of this word and this name of Jesus throughout the entire earth? And he, so he, he came up with this plan. I'm making up my own story here, but it's, it's really the way it is. Um, and you could say, well, that isn't it. Well, you can't prove I'm not telling you the truth either. <laughs> That's one thing I know. So he said, I have a plan. I'm going to work through history. I'm going to work for my people. I'm going to build some momentum with, with the word of God and with things that take place. I'm going to refine people. And I'm going to set a time when, when this, this land is set aside to evangelize this earth. That's one thing. The other thing was... I've got to have a land. I've got to have a nation that will take care of my, my children Israel, my nation Israel. I need a plan. I need, an earth. I need a place for that plan. So when he sent those, those people that were coming across here for freedom of, of how they want to serve God, they set that cross in there. And at that point, in my heart, he made a covenant with this land. And this land has been blessed ever since then. Now, what I'm going to say is right now, uh, in, in Acts, the uh, <coughs> first chapter, you know, Jesus, always, people always want to say, well, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? And Jesus made a comment there, not a comment, a statement. He said, you know, the times and seasons are up to the Father. But also he's saying, but the rest of it he's put in your hands. 
We have a dominion that we walk in. We have an anointing by the Holy Spirit. That anointing is on. Whether you know it or not, when you got made your heart right with Jesus, you made Jesus the Lord of your life. And so many times when I'm teaching, I tell you how to do it. Go to Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Read it and, and just believe it because in your heart you believe that Jesus died for you and raised from the dead. With your mouth you speak it out. When you do that, there's a Holy Spirit. There's an empowerment that came into your life. Life. I don't care if it was 50 years ago, 10 minutes ago. I don't care when it was. There was an empowerment that came into your life. And that was an empowerment to take you on to supernatural things. We're walking in a supernatural time right now. And people could say, well, oh, dear, oh, what are we going to do? Wring their hands and everything. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep praising my God. I'm going to keep, because of the call of my God in my life, I'm going to keep preaching this gospel. But I was preaching the gospel the day I got saved. I, I was free. I was free I didn't know what I was even free from but but you know one of the things I was free from and it says it in Romans 8 it said God has not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear but a, but an adoption whereas we cry Abba Father he's my father he's your father we've been adopted into his great kingdom in Jesus name so now let's go back a couple steps you know back in history a long time before uh, you know and I can't give you the timeline on this, but it'd be around 24, 25, 2,600 years ago. I don't know, a long time ago. Uh, older than, than America, for sure. Anyway, uh, it says in here, and I'm going to read, uh, take the liberty to read some things out of this gospel uh, for you. Uh, in verse 24 of Isaiah 44, he says, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, he who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the sign of the babblers, who drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backwards, who makes their knowledge of foolishness, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers who says to Jerusalem, you shall be inhabited. To the cities of Judah, you shall be built, and I will raise up her waste gates. Who says to the deep, be dry. This is God. I will dry up your rivers. And in verse 28, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd. He shall perform all my pleasures, even saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built. And to the temple your foundation shall be laid. Brothers and sisters, when you see this, when you see this, and people say, well, our present president, he's like a Cyrus. I believe it. He's not Cyrus. He's like a Cyrus. God brought him up somewhere, put a plan in his heart, put an anointing on his life to do some certain things. And where Cyrus was there to rebuild Jerusalem, we have a situation where we have a leader <coughs> that, that absolutely confirmed a prophecy that was done centuries ago that set the capital back in Jerusalem and set our standard, our all of our power right there in Jerusalem for them, for my God. That was something our Lord wanted. That was something that, that was prophesied a long time ago to rebuild that city because those people are God's, that's God's land. And all the people that ever come against Israel, I'll tell you what, they're not going to get very far, and we know that from prophecy. But let me say a couple more things before I depart from this. This is a chapter 45 now in Isaiah. And my Bible says this, and so does yours. The Lord, the Lord, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, to loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors. Now, this is a New King James Version, and in the next verse says, so that the gates will not be shut. And I will go before you and make their crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the, the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, the hidden 
riches of secret places. And you may know that I, the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, who call you by your name and the God of Israel. And I could go on here, but I want to tell you something that dove right here, right now. In my Bible, and not every translation says this exactly, but in, in back up here in verse 1, when it says to subdue nations before him, I want you to kind of check out what's happened in the last few years. I want you to check out some of the things that loose their armor of the kings. They've lost a lot of their strength coming against us, the evil kings. And to open him before him the double doors. I'm looking at that scripture a number of years ago, <coughs> four or five years ago. And I, I was looking at that scripture as I do quite often, and I meditate these scriptures, and I look at those. And I heard the Spirit of the living God say to me, that's the anointing on the body of Christ today. It's a double anointing. Now, you can shout me down if you want to, but I want to tell you something. You walking with the Spirit of the living God right now, you step out in your faith. You step out and begin to declare some things. Don't be overrun by these, these people, like he said, these, these wicked people. I mean, these people that think they're so smart, so wise, but they're not as wise as our living God. They're not as wise as the Holy Living Spirit that's in your life right now. I'm just, uh, I just encourage you, call on the Spirit of God right now in your own life and say, Lord, there must be more for me. There must be more for me to do. There must be more people that I need to touch with my life. There must be more light I can bring into this dark world. So let's get it on right now. Double anointing. I'm telling you, I believe it in my heart. There's such an outpouring right now this day. I just declare there's an outpouring this day for you to step into. It has nothing to do what will happen in the world tomorrow, the next day, whatever, but it can be because you can be a world changer. You can be a world changer. There's, there's ministries called that, but see, I believe I'm a world changer. I, I believe the Spirit of God living in me can change, change the very environment around me at any time and bring great favor to me and my family and, and you people that are walking with the Lord. I'll prophesy that with you right now. That anointing is going to bring a, a great favor into your life. Expect it. Expect it. You know the difference between people that don't believe and people that do believe? Well, there's a lot of difference. People that believe things happen for them. People that don't believe, hey, just shut the lights off. It got dark. You start believing, the lights will get brighter, uh, brighter and brighter by the... Uh, <laughs> Day by day, they'll get brighter and brighter and brighter. Your lights will shine. That's, that's the whole idea about this gospel. You know, it, the scripture says, uh, arise, shine, and you're for your light to come. Now that's in Isaiah, uh, chapter 60 of Isaiah. But arise and shine. Let your light, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Take that to your life today. Say, well, it's not just another day. It's not just another other day at all. I'm telling you, if you'll drink this in, the Spirit of God will illuminate your heart. He'll not only bring great flavor to you, greater flavor than ever, He'll show you ways to prosper your life. He'll, he'll show you ways through the power of His Word to, to to pray divine protection over your family, your household, that those who you love. He'll show you how to walk into people's lives that need healing. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who told us to do that? Jesus told us to do that. I didn't tell you to do that. He said that. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Did he mean it? Sure he meant it. Some, sometimes I say, do you think Jesus would lie? When he says things like that, he must mean it. Yes, he meant it. And his blood is on it. He sealed that with his blood. He sealed that with his blood in Jesus' name. Now, I'm telling you, uh, a scripture that pops up a lot. Um, well, anyway, uh, verse 2 there of Isaiah 60, before I depart from it. Uh, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. We know that. And the deep darkness of the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. That's you. That's me. That's the body of Christ for those that will just step into this today. I know this is a word from the Lord. I know it's a word. I know the Spirit of God is upon me to deliver this into your life today. I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. 
And, you know, uh, I have to make a, a little comment that sounds a little bit negative. But, you know, in Matthew 16, and I'll say this because, you know, one of the things that God's raising up right now are people that know how to pray. There's more and more and more people. These are recent events <coughs> that have taken place in our capital and others. I've heard some people praying that know how to pray. These are intercessors. There are people like you that someday you all of a sudden realize when you pray, your prayers get answered because you expect them to be answered. If you just think, well, I hope it will, and that's not the key. I know it will. I know that right now. Guess what? I'm preaching a message here or speaking a message and what? I know in my heart, I believe this message is going out to dimensions, and I know it's changing lives. Now, I want a little comment here, because uh, when you're growing in your faith, it's important that you look at the word and what it really says. Uh, and it says in verse 19, just, to, just to, I'm, I'm going to just go through this. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So what that is, is there's an empowerment there for you to begin to take charge of things that shouldn't be in your life. That's basically a, a, a way to bind up the darkness in your life, in your family's life, in the family, in the earth. Anything God has you praying for, it's, it's the empowerment to pray those things down through the name of Jesus. And the thing he says there is, I'll give you the keys on how to do it. More than once, more than several times when I didn't know how to pray or I had a situation. And, and I knew there was a situation, but I knew I needed the key to it. Amen. And I'd ask God for the key. And guess what? When you do that, things happen. But he's, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, I give you the keys, and whatever you bind or whatever you loose, the reason I bring this up is because uh, maybe I, this is a little thing, but when you're listening to Christian music and you have people that are DJs on there, many times they don't know this word but people think they're hearing the gospel. I heard it yesterday from a popular DJ in this area. And he says, you can't bind the devil. The Jesus bound the devil on the cross. Well, then how come Jesus told us that word to bind up the darkness? See, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone, but do not take people's word for what the Bible says, go and find it for yourself because there's such a great empowerment for you in this word of God. It says in, in James 5, verse 16, it says the, uh, I'll just <coughs> turn there, excuse me. It says the, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. It says the effective, fervent, Prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, who's a righteous man? A born-again man or woman. You're born again, you're righteous. You're right standing before the Father, and that's the way it is. And it says here, when you fervently pray, and you believe it in your heart, and you just determine that that's the way it is, God will answer that prayer, and you will see much power available. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power, it says in the Amplified, tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. You start believing this. You know, when I first heard anything about faith, because I'd been saved about a year and four months, just to be exact, and and at that point, I'd hear people saying stuff just like sometimes you do out there, and they say these things, and, and they say, well, God, maybe he will, maybe he won't. We don't know what God's going to do. But see, there's something here. I'm a, I just wrote down an, uh, something here the other day. I'm going to read exactly what it is, and I just have to believe it. <clears throat> I have something here that, here's a statement. In the Old Testament, God took care of the enemies when his people were faithful. In the New Testament, the shed blood of Jesus established an authority and an empowerment in God's people. See the difference? See, God is not the master puppeteer. A lot of people want to make it sound like that, like he's the master puppeteer. Whatever will be, will be. I mean, if, he's, if someone's going to die next Tuesday, well, Tuesday, look out because it might be your day. No, that's, that's phony baloney. 
But see, because in the Old Testament, he didn't have the Spirit of God released yet. Jesus hadn't died yet for us. He had the old law. And he had to walk in that. And the law was good. I mean, a lot of the law was good because it taught people how to live. It was healthy not to kill your neighbor. It was healthy not to commit adultery. It was healthy not to do these things. You know, so that's how he had to do it. But see, when the Spirit of God came into your life right now, he gave you a, a reliable, what, a, what a, uh, I heard one time was a reliable conscience. Uh, you have something reliable in you to tell you <coughs> the good things, the bad things, the things you should do, things you shouldn't do. You don't need some list. You just know when you the Spirit of God is working in you and you honor the Spirit of God, you know in your heart what's right or wrong. And also you know how to pray. You know how to get things done. Because if you don't, you're, I hope after today, if you, I want you to dig a little bit deeper and really get a hold of what. What, what I'm sharing today. So praise the Lord. You know, I go on and on with this thing, but I'm telling you something. The Spirit of God is on you. It's on me. And, and there's so many things that, uh, that I'd like to say even more. And, uh, but, but I want to continue to tell you, circumstances do not change God. Church circumstances do not change Jesus. They don't change the covenant that we have with him. <coughs> we don't, it can't change the blood. It can't change what's been bought and paid for for you in every realm. It can't change the fact that he's here for you. He's here to guide you. And think about those keys. Think about the keys. You can ask the key. And I remember the very first time uh, that I really got aware of that, we had a, a young lady uh, we were actually uh, pastoring a church at that time. And this young lady was getting very depressed. And I studied up on all these things about when people get that way. And I don't want to get into psychology because it doesn't have so much to do with all that as it does it's just darkness trying to get on to people. There's some of you right now, darkness might be trying to get on to you. And what you can do is say, darkness, you have to flee. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. If he says that, then you need to resist him, but you've got the empowerment to do it. You just, it's pretty simple, devil. Leave me alone in Jesus' name. I have, I have authority over you. I have authority over all power of the enemy because Jesus said that in Luke 10, 19. So where was I going with all this? Well, I don't know. Must have been something more, more uh, that I wanted to say. But uh, I, I, I started saying, in, uh, you know, I started hearing these scriptures. I, I, you know, and one of them was in John 16, 20. 3 and 24. And in that day you'll ask me nothing. In other words, you don't pray to Jesus. That's what he's saying. Don't pray to me anymore. He said, most assuredly, I say, whatever you ask the Father, my name he'll give it to you. And, and another way of saying that is he'll grant it to you. You know, I listened to that scripture over and over and over again. And in, in less than a month and a half, I began to, I saw my first person healed by the power, just asking God to do some things. I, I'm not joking. Uh, this got in me. I said, I can really ask God for things, but I have to do it in the name of Jesus. Why do I use the name of Jesus? Because that's where the power is. I explained that earlier. It's the name. Jesus is a name that's been named of, of, that's above every name. The Bible says in Philippians, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, is it legalism? Yes, it is, because the devil is very legalism. You want to drive him out, that name of Jesus will drive him out. The name of Jesus will drive him out every time. And, and so that's just a pretty good thing to know. But you see, all these scriptures began to, take, began to get alive in me. I began to see things change around me. Did my life get perfect? No, it didn't get perfect. But I'll tell you, uh, it, it wasn't long before the Lord was using me to share some good things with people, to give them, lift them up, lift them up. You know, it isn't always about some sign or miracle either. It's about you're walking around and your light is shining because it said, rise, shine, your light light, your light, your shining, praise God, that's what we want, amen, well, praise God, I think that I've shared a lot right now, I just think, Father, that, that we've got some people listening right today, that this will take root in their heart, in fact, I, I ask you to root it into their heart, supernaturally, 
empower them now that you've already done that through the power of the Holy Spirit. So thank God, thank God, thank God. And you know, by throwing a comment out there about uh, the difference between the Old and New Testament, hey, that's good stuff. I mean, I live in the Old Testament too because there's so much wisdom in there. There's so much power in the Old Testament. There's so much about that. So we don't throw that one away. We keep that one around too. But see, there was some bondage with the rules. And so people out there, even some of the preachers that you listen to, they don't have this clear cut yet. They somehow, they just don't study enough, I guess, to really make it clear to you that of this empowerment that's on you today. We're not puppets. We're not puppets. People like to throw this thing around. God is sovereign. Yes, he is to his word. When God declares his word, and there's 66 books in this Bible that declare his word, when you walk in that word, he's sovereign to that word. He's going to make it happen. They, but that's how you know him is through his word. We know that. And, and so on and so forth. And there are things, times and seasons, and he's in charge of those. We can't decide, well, is a rapture yesterday, tomorrow? It wasn't yesterday or some of us wouldn't be here. But is it next Tuesday? I don't know. Is it... Is it 2024? I don't know, but God knows. But uh, Jesus basically, he said at that time when he's on the earth, he said, I don't know. He said, that's up to the Lord. That's up to our Father God, the creator, uh, creator of the whole universe. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, in Romans 8, uh, here it talks about, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And that's where he's talking about the life, the law of the spirit of life that's in Jesus and and. Praise God, I just believe in my heart there's some of that empowerment going into your life right today, into your ears, into your heart, and I believe that some of you will rise up and say, wow, th there's things I didn't know. There's things I want to know more of. I want to, be in I want to be invigorated by this word. I want this to settle in me. I want that empowerment to happen because you know what? Uh, we're, we're hearing some things out there in, in the spirit realm. I believe right now we are in an outpouring. I don't care how dark it is out there. The spirit of the living God that's working through you right now, through your brothers and sisters, through, through people that, that yield themselves to the spirit of the living God. I believe right now the anointing. Uh, you just have to test me on this. You know, Jesus said in Malachi, test me on this. Test me and see if it isn't working. Well, you can test me today too. Go do something with this. Go do something. You know, uh, lay hands on somebody or go tell somebody what a good life you have in Jesus. Don't get into some of these political arguments that's trying to change people's minds. When they try to throw this stuff at you, this darkness, say, well, look, guess what? Jesus the Lord of my life and you need him in your life too. You want to make him your Lord right today and you'll be surprised how many people say, yeah, I would. That's how, uh, that, that's, that's how, that's how it is. Yeah. Say, uh, you know, uh, it's like more than once in my life walking out there with people. I've said such, such things like that. How'd you like to make Jesus the Lord of your life? It's almost like they say, well, nobody's ever asked me before. Are you kidding me? And they're surrounded by people Church people, they're surrounded by all these things, and nobody ever asked them before. I've had that happen more than once, and I'll tell you, uh, Sandy could verify that's the truth. Uh, uh, that's just the way it is. What's the difference? Well, nobody ever asks them. How'd you like to make Jesus the Lord of your life today? Well, nobody ever asked me that before. How'd you like to know that the Spirit of the living God is empowering you today to take you into the supernatural? Well, nobody ever asked me that today. Well, I'll tell you what. You ask that question. You ask the Lord, I, I, this is the day, Lord. I want to step into this power that's in me because it's resident in me. You can't even take it away from you. You just can leave it sit there if you don't do anything with it. But the Spirit of God came into you by a breath, Benuma, when you said, Jesus, come into my life and... I want you to be my Lord. You can't even stop the Holy Spirit from working in your heart. Amen. You can ignore him, but that won't get you very far. Or you can ignite that. You can honor him and say, Jesus, you gave me the Holy Spirit. I want that, I want that spirit of the living God to flow through my body right now. I want that spirit of the living God not only that's in me and my heart, down here in my heart. I want the spirit of the God, living God to be honored right now and glorified in Jesus' name. And you know what? I just, I just see right now the spirit of the living God in some of your bodies that need healing. I see the spirit of God just purging that disease out of your life. I can just see it. Some of you are being purged of disease. You're being 
purged of unbelief. You're being purged of doubt because you're letting the Holy Spirit take over your life right now through your human spirit. Bless God, I believe it. I want you to receive it. Whatsoever things you desire, uh, uh, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Mark eleven twenty four. It's so, it's so, it's so. So praise God. Praise God for this day. Praise God receive this as an igniting into your life. Praise God. Just, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. We just thank the Lord. We just thank the Lord for your word. We thank you, Father. Your word brings life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And they're life giving. Hey, brothers and sisters, be a life giver today. Just be a life giver. Bless the Father. Bless these people right now. Bless everybody that hears this, sees it. Bless them, Father. Encourage them to walk in it. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it.